Hey, g'day, it's Prezzo, thanks for stopping by. Now I'm starting a new project today. This is one that's been on the back burner for over 12 months. I had the initial burst of enthusiasm, <laughs> and I did a lot of modeling in CAD, and I got some of the materials together, and then it just sat there while I finished other projects. But now's the time to get going on it, so let's have a close look at the bench and uh, make a start. The machine I want to build in this episode, or in this series of episodes, is a small dedicated drill bit grinder or more specifically, a four facet drill sharpener. Now I've got lots of small drill bits in fractional inch sizes and metric. I've got letter and number drills. And I hate the concept of just uh, throwing a drill bit away because it's a little bit blunt or it's got a corner chipped off. And I figured that if I could resharpen those drill bits and reuse them, uh, they, they'll have you know almost indefinite life. Now, in researching this topic, I came across this article here. Now, this is from a gentleman named John Moran. He also goes by the name Gadget Builder. Now, he has a website and he's got a very lengthy and well-written article on making one of these four facet drill grinders. So this is just the cover page off about 35 pages of information that he's put on the web. And he has some drawings and lots of photographs and illustrations and there's there was enough information there for me to get started on modeling this in CAD. Now he does offer a service, if you email him, he will send you more information about this particular tool. So I did that and he kindly sent back some more details, uh, some more drawings, but they were mostly 2D CAD drawings and there were a few little errors that I had to iron out so I went along when I modeled this in CAD. So I'm going to show you the CAD drawings in a minute and I'm going to show you a mock-up of what I've done so far. But that's it there. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to go and look at this article. And there's a, an, you know, a photograph there of the version that he has made. And he also has a gallery of other uh, devices made along the same lines. So you can have a look at what other builders have done and see their solution to the same basic tool. Okay, let's have a look at the mock-up. What you're looking at here are most of the parts that I need to make to manufacture this tool. And look at it there and it's not much of it, but uh, we also need to have a grinding wheel and we need to drive that grinding wheel with some sort of an electric motor. But I'll show you that in a moment. So this is essentially just a carriage that slides left and right, or a gantry if you like to call it that. And on top of that is a trunnion that can be set to two different angles to give you the primary and secondary relief on the grind of the drill bit. And there's also a collet block. Now this is a commercially available ER20 collet chuck with a 25mm diameter shank on it. So I bought that, I bought the collets, and that gives me the capacity to hold drill bits from uh, around about 1 16th or 1.5mm up to around about 10mm. And that covers the range of drill bits that I want to be able to sharpen. For anything bigger than that, I've got one of these things here. Now, this is part of my Decal clone tool and cutter grinder, but uh, I've never used it, and I believe they're very awkward to set up, and straight out of the box, they're not much good. You need to modify them before you can make them work very effectively. So that's an option for bigger drill bits, but it's the smaller ones where I need a bit of help to be able to get a good sharp cutting edge on them. So in practice, uh, what we have to do here is be able to slide the gantry left and right on that track there and pivot the trunnion. The collet block itself has two dowel pins and they fit into a set of holes in the trunnion. Now there are three different angles you can set the collet block to. Uh, so I think the first one there is 118 degrees included angle. And then of course, when you tilt the trunnion, you can get the two different relief angles that you need. Now on the collet block itself, there's a cam arrangement at this end here, and this has the capacity to allow you to index the drill bit exactly 180, 180 degrees. So you can rotate it against a pin there, and then when you ground the first face of the drill bit, you can rotate that round against the stop and grind the second lip. So that takes a lot of the guesswork out of the drill grinding uh, procedure and it gives you, you know, a high degree of accuracy, at least with the indexing anyway. So all of these parts are going to be made from aluminium, all the blue parts. Uh, the 
parts made of MDF, the laser cut MDF, they're going to be made of steel and of course uh, the aluminium track here. This stuff is just called uh, V-slot uh, is the, the name you'll find it by but you don't have to use this, you could use linear rail, you could use your own homemade uh, you know, set of rails or rods or whatever you like. In the original article it showed a series of or two rails with some plastic sliding blocks on it and you know, that would be fine. I actually had this V-slot and the wheels from an old 3D printer that I had made. So it's, it's easy to set up and it's very accurate and runs very smoothly so I decided to recycle that. So they're the parts. Now you need to be able to have a grinding wheel in front of that drill bit of course and the wheel that I'll be using is this one. So this is just a cup wheel and it's going to be mounted on a spindle and I'm going to be driving that with a, a belt drive and an electric motor. Now the, uh, the driving system for this wheel is actually an old corn tool and cutter grinder that I had made. Now I made it and hated it. <laughs> I hardly ever used it. I ended up buying one of those Decor clone tool and cutter grinders instead. But I've got the spindle and I've got the motor mount and I've got all the rest of it, so that's what I'll be using. Okay, this is my inventory of parts for making this tool. All of this stock came out of my scrap box. I didn't have to buy any materials to do this. The big steel plate underneath here is six millimeter thick hot rolled steel. That's going to be the base for the whole machine. Everything will mount on that. And I'm also using hot rolled steel for the trunnion plate and the gantry plate. Everything else is aluminium. That will get anodized when we're done. The base will get powder coated and this part here, I'm going to try not to put any coating on that. I'm just going to use the black oxide finish because that is where the collet block will sit. And we don't want to have any sort of bulky thick coating on that when we're done. Now if it does become an issue with rust, I'll sink plate that. So there's all the materials, let's have a look at the drawings. Okay, these are the drawings. There's roughly seven pages here of detailed drawings and a general arrangement. Now, I use Autodesk Inventor for doing all my 3D CAD work and uh, I've modeled everything on this particular assembly except for the grinding spindle. I put the grinding wheel in and I know where that sits in relation to the, the carriage and so on. And this is the column that the grinding spindle will sit on. I'll show you that in a minute. So if you want these drawings, I'm happy to share them, but you need to wait until I finish the whole machine because there's almost certainly errors and uh, missing dimensions on these sheets. Now, everything's in metric, although the original drawings that I was given by John Moran were in inches, and I've just simply converted those inch dimensions to metric. So you see some odd dimensions like 22.53. And the other thing is that I'm using all metric fasteners and metric threads. But if you get this and you decide to make your own version, you can just use fractional inch fasteners and threads on yours. There's probably some equivalent that would work. Okay, this is the entire grinding head of the Quorn tool and cutter grinder. Now it's got a 2870 RPM motor with a belt drive, single phase. And this bore here takes this particular vertical shaft. This will be attached to the base of the whole drill bit grinder and will fit into that bore there and you can lock the whole spindle in place using that uh, lock there. Now you can also raise and lower the whole wheel head either by sliding the whole assembly up and down on that shaft there or there's a small uh, range of movement available with this little micrometer adjustment here which tilts the wheel head. The cup wheel that I'm using here fits into, oh it's got its own little uh, arbor there, and it fits into the center of the spindle and there's a draw bolt through the back here which pulls that into position. So you could substitute that cup wheel there for a diamond wheel, so if you want to be able to sharpen carbide drill bits you just swap this wheel out for a diamond wheel. So that's what I'm using. If you don't have this or if you don't want to make something like this you can drive that wheel directly with a small DC or AC motor. The only thing you have to be careful of is you don't have a lot of end float in the drive system for that wheel. Otherwise the wheel will hop in and out and that's going to give you inaccurate grinds on the end of your drill bit. Anyway, that's what I'm using. Don't have to use it. Well, look what just turned up. Now, I've wanted one of these for a long, long time. 
and I bought it recently. It came all the way from Perth in Western Australia. If you know the geography of Australia, it's about as far away as you can get on the mainland of Australia from where I live. But it came up, it was the right price, and I bought it. And the guy from Star Trek just delivered it by pushing a pallet jack all the way down our road. And he didn't want to drive his truck in because we just recently had the road resurface. I felt really sorry for him when he turned up. <laughs> he pushed the pallet jack about 300 metres along our road. Anyway, I'm going to get this unboxed and we'll have a quick look at it. Uh, but uh, this is going to make another video on another day. Well, that was a bit of a struggle getting it off the pallet by myself. This weighs 45 kilos, and this is a shaper head or a slotter head for a Bridgeport milling machine. Now, it's not an original, it's a copy, and I paid $1,500 including shipping from West Australia to get this. The Taiwanese clones of the original Bridgeport sell for between four and a half to five thousand dollars from Heron Forbes and uh, that's as much as I paid for the entire milling machine, so getting a new one was out of the question. But super happy to get this. Uh, I did ask the vendor to send a video showing it running, and it does run. I just uh, turned it over by hand. Everything's happening down here as it should, so I'm fairly confident it's gonna work quite well. The only problem is it's missing the mounting hardware that goes on the back of the Bridgeport RAM. So there should be a big casting on here with a circular disc and a couple of projections that bolt on the back of the ramp. They weren't part of the deal, so I'm going to need to manufacture something to do that job. I've actually got a couple of fairly stout angle plates. I just need a circular disc to go on here, so I'm fairly sure I can do that. So there you go, I've got one, and you're going to see this crop up in a video at some point in the future. But yeah, super happy to get it. This is the stock that I showed you on the bench before, just as rough pieces. And what I've done is I've sized all of this material. Now I used a large six insert face mill to give me the correct thickness and width. And for length, I've side milled that with a 12 millimeter carbide end mill. So these pieces now are exactly the right size according to the drawings. And you can see how they fit together compared to our mock-up. So, all I need to do now is to mark out and drill a whole bunch of holes. Now, this large 25mm bore here takes a collet chuck, and the only reamer that I have in 25mm is this one with a number 3 Morse taper. Now, the milling machine has R8, so I can't fit this in the milling machine easily. So, we're going to have to do this uh, operation of the boring and the reaming in the lathe. So, what I'll do now is I'm going to set up and I'm going to mark the position of that hole and also the index pin hole here. Now this is the, uh, that dowel pin actually controls the rotation of the collet chuck to give you the 180 degree indexing. And I'm also gonna drill and tap where necessary all of the holes in these two pieces here. So the, the base piece, the strip, and the body of the collet uh, holder. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Uh, I'll just use the center finding function on the DRO to get the center here, and then we'll offset from that. Okay, that's our center. I'm just going to center drill that, give me a location when we go over the lathe, and then I'll do the offset for the small dowel pin. This is where it's really, really handy to have a mock-up, a 3D printed mock-up, because you can visually check that you're putting the hole in the right place. Uh, it's all very well to have drawings, but for me anyway, this is a, a much more foolproof way of doing it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and drill and ream for the dowel pin and then we'll flip it over and we'll put some of these other holes in. I don't know if you can see that, but that cheap Chinese reamer is about as crooked as a dog's hind leg. And I'm a bit worried that that's going to ream oversize. So I think what I'm going to do is just turn this by hand, just nice and steady. The only other reamer I've got is a hand reamer, which of course has a tapered lead on it. That's okay. I can lock tight that pin in, but uh, I'll just go down to full depth now and then we'll flip it over and drill the other holes. Yeah, that's okay. I'll take that. This part that I got in the bias to here now is this base and uh, the drawing stipulated these are separate parts although I guess you could machine this out of one block if you wanted to. I think this gives you some options to tune the center position of that collar chuck if you need to. But I've got this sitting on some uh, sacrificial parallels. I have to drill very close to the edge there. So I've got the DRO set up and we'll go ahead and drill all of those and then we could screw those parts together but we need to go and machine that big bore for the collet chuck first.
All right, there's the four spot positions done. You would have noticed me checking with my little mock-up here to <laughs> verify that I'm putting these holes in the right place. And that's what it's for. All right, those two parts should fit together now. I hope. <laughs> well, two parts do go together, partly. Uh, this dowel pin fits in okay. This one does not. The dowel pin is clashing against the edge of the head of that screw. So on the mock-up, I just used some Phillips head screws. Uh, these ones are a little bit bigger in diameter and it's almost, but not quite, allowing it to go in. So that's okay, I can just reduce the diameter of the head of both those screws and we'll get that to fit. Not quite sure why they're so close together, there's really no need for it, but they were the dimensions on the drawing. And oh, Butterfingers here dropped this on the floor while I was trying to get the dowel pin out of the packet and I've got two massive dents on that corner there. So I'm gonna to have to tidy that up and do a bit of dressing to make it look pretty. But we can go ahead now and do the bore for the collet chuck. Got that set up in the fore jaw now. I've got it dialed in. I've got a bit of scrap here against the jaw so I don't damage that surface. All these parts are going to get anodized later so I don't want them damaged. Okay, so what we can do now is drill, bore, and ring. So I've got about 0.25 of a millimetre to go and I want to leave about 0.1 for the reamer to clean up. So I'll just do another very light pass and then we'll try the reamer. So in theory this shouldn't fit. Oh gee. <laughs> It's very close, uh, but let's run the reamer through that now. That surface finish is not brilliant. Right, that's 
it's pretty good though so that's like a, a nice running fit all the way through there uh, there is going to be a locking screw which will hold that collet chuck in place later on but for now I think that's okay So I've assembled these two parts back together again and I've got this sitting in the vise on the milling machine and I've centered over the bore using the edge finder and you can see that I've got that directly over that bore there. So what we need to do here is make some clearance for the diameter of that nut. Now the nut is 33.8 roughly diameter and the long edge of that block there is just on 33. So I'm going to have to cut into this vertical edge here or this vertical face using a boring head and we're just going to take a scallop out of that until that nut will sit in there and clear over the ball. So uh, the exact measurement's not all that critical. On the drawing it's shown as being a radius of 19 millimeters but as long as we've got clearance there that'll be fine. So I've got the boring head set up and I've set the radius on the boring head so that it's just touching that vertical surface at the back there. So that's sort of going to be our starting radius and you can see from the 3D print here that the size of that scallop is not very big at all. Uh, it stops short of the hole for the dowel pin so I'll do the same on this one. I'm not going to bother measuring it, it doesn't really matter, it's just clearance. And I've set the Z on the quill so that it's 0.2 of a millimetre clear of this surface. I don't want to touch that, uh, that flat surface on top of the collet block. All right, that's good enough. Uh, it's probably more than we need. Remember, it's just so we can rotate the entire collet chuck while it's in that bore there. We don't need to tighten the nut in that position. It's just so I can rotate if we're sharpening a drill bit. Okay, let's take it out, have a quick look, and uh, yeah, that's the end of today's video. There's our collet block assembly assembled to this point. Now, it's not quite finished. There needs to be a locking screw cut into this edge here so we need a like a flap and a threaded hole with a screw and we also need to make this indexing ring but underneath there you'll notice I've got both the dowel pins in there now all I had to do was reduce the diameter of those countersunk head screws a bit and that pin went in I've also inserted the pin where the indexing ring will engage and this is sort of the, the clever part about this whole assembly so when you ground the first cutting edge of your drill bit, you can index the entire collet chuck around exactly 180 degrees and do the next edge. So in the next episode, I'm going to make that little indexing ring. We'll do the, the thread in there, and then that part is finished. Now on the trunnion here, I went back and looked at the drawings, and I worked out what these three holes here were for. So I hope this is showing up on the camera OK, but this hole here is the common hole and the pin closest to the drill point will go into that hole and then you've got three more holes to give you angles of or included angles of 60 degrees, 118 degrees and 135. 
So what you do is you just simply choose what included angle you want on the facets of your drill bit and you drop this pin into that hole and then you can just move from one hole to the next if you change your mind. So obviously you'd, you'd work out what your included angle is going to be on all your drill bits and you'd use that one consistently but there is that option to change. Now I've got all of the stock cut up for the other parts and like I said in the next episode we're going to have a go at this indexing ring here that's going to come out of that piece of stock there and uh, I've got material cut up for these outer pillars or columns if you like to call them that and I've got the stock cut up for what else these little bits here that go on the trunnion they're all done and sized and there's also going to be a sort of a feed lever so there will be this long piece of aluminium here it's going to be fixed on a pillar at this point so that it can rotate around this central axis point here and then there'll be a short connecting rod that joins the lever to the, the carriage so that in operation when you're grinding drill bits you don't need to grab the carriage you can just grab that handle and pivot that so uh, yeah I've got, uh, got a fair way into it and I, I like the idea of having the mock-up that sort of works really well for me uh, I'm one of these people that can look at a drawing and then just somehow my brain inverts it <laughs> and I make a mirror image I'll do that every time but having this mock-up, you know, just gives me the reassurance I'm doing the right thing. I'm going to leave you with a bit of garden wildlife footage today. We've got uh, some kangaroos who were in the yard the other day. There's a juvenile from last year and there's a very, very young joey that's just poking its head out of the pouch. So we'll have a look at that. And there was a, one of the local native birds, a young one, is learning to sing. And they've got this beautiful voice, so I'll show you that. So don't forget to show up for the next episode, uh, more interesting machining coming up and uh, this is going to be a, a really useful accessory for me in the workshop and uh, like I say, if you want to build one, don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, but the general principle should be the same. But uh, yeah, catch you on the next episode and uh, we'll hang out. Okay, espresso, thank you. This is a female eastern grey kangaroo. It's been hanging around our place. She's got a little tiny joey in the pouch, and on the other side of these cord and steel silhouettes that I made, there's the joey from last year. It's uh, a juvenile. So there it is over there. Not sure if that's a male or a female. We've only seen the tip of the little joey's tail out of the pouch. I think you can just see it there now actually. There's the tip of the tail just protruding from the pouch. Occasionally we'll see the head pop out. And it's probably having a snooze along with mum. <laughs> <laughs>